a scene of falling stars looks amazing and we all love seeing it what are these falling stars they are meteorites or similar bodies from space which enter the earth's atmosphere however this wasn't known to people back in time people innocently believed that actual stars from space fall down on the earth's surface it was due to advancement in science and technology that many discoveries were made and the fact that these are not stars but meteorites were accepted the same is applicable to many legendary discoveries of the past due to several reasons many discoveries were left ignored and unaccepted but the advancement in technology helped in better research which could support the long ignored works of many scientists one example of such unfortunate incidences was the work of the father of genetics gregor mendel mendel's work was far beyond excellence however it wasn't appreciated right from the time it was put forth before the scientific society several reasons led to the demotivating rejection of his efforts one of the major reasons included his concept of non-blending inheritance according to mendel genes or factors to be precise do not blend and that the phenotype of the offsprings is similar to only one parent it cannot be an intermediate between the two parents however the variation seen in organisms in general could not be explained by this concept of non-blending of characters secondly mendel introduced mathematical calculations to explain biological processes he presented results in the form of ratios at that time mathematical forms of biological results were not easily accepted hence his work was largely ignored lastly when mendel said that there are factors which are passed from one generation to the other he had no physical proof of those units in the sense there was no evidence of the physical form of the factors that mendel could present so the proposition that discrete units called factors exist was like a hypothetical theory mendel had no proper evidence that such units actually exist due to all these reasons mendelian genetics remained dormant for several years after being almost rejected in the mid 1860s mendel's work remained unnoticed until the beginning of the 20th century So what exactly happened in the early 1900s? Who shined a light on the remarkable contribution of Gregor Mendel? Let's find that out in the next part. Microscopes ease the lives of scientists. However, they are not new inventions. Microscopes were invented several years ago. beginning with simple lenses used to zoom in to the desired structures today we have electron microscopes which can give us minute details of the smallest possible structure but the microscopes in the 19th century were not that advanced so minute observations of the living cells and the cellular components were not really possible in the beginning of the 20th century The advancements in microscopy and related techniques helped in acute observations of the cell division processes. As a result, cytologists could now figure out structures that duplicate and divide during cell division. Which structures could these be? That's right. Scientists were now able to identify and spot chromosomes inside the nucleus. We now know what chromosomes are and how they look. but it wasn't known back then so the newly found structures inside the cell grabbed a lot of attention also by this time due to the understanding of the chromosomal structures processes like mitosis and meiosis were well understood during the same time mendel's long ignored legendary work started gaining importance as many scientists started reevaluating the results There were two scientists from different parts of the globe who simultaneously put forth a few hypotheses. 
These hypotheses became a theory later, which is what we are going to study now. Walter Sutton, an American geneticist and physician, was working on grasshoppers. He found that chromosomes occur in pairs and during meiosis separate from one another in the gametes formed. He put forth the assumption that a pair of chromosome contains one chromosome from the mother and one from the father. The separation of chromosomes during meiosis may be the explanation of the Mendelian laws of inheritance. This is what Sutton hypothesized. Around the same time, a German biologist named Theodor Boveri was working on sea urchins. He found that in order to have a proper embryonic development, all the chromosomal pairs have to be present in the embryo. Both these works later were combined to give us a single theory which came to be known as the Boveri Sutton theory of inheritance. Now, it's also referred to as the chromosomal theory of inheritance. The theory in simple words stated that individual genes are found at specific locations on a particular chromosome. Also, the pattern of behavior of the chromosomes during meiosis explains us the Mendelian laws as to why and how the genes are inherited. The theory and thus the laws of genetics can be explained well with the help of exactly three points or observations. The first point said that chromosomes come in pairs. These are now called homologous pairs by us. One chromosome from the pair comes from the mother while the other from the father. Isn't this what Mendel had hypothesized about genes too? He said that factors now called genes come in pairs. One factor of the pair is from the mother and the other from the father. The next point stated that the chromosomes from a single pair separate from each other during the process of meiosis. That means one chromosome will be passed to the respective gamete. This is just the simplest explanation of Mendel's law of segregation. In the law, Mendel emphasized on the separation of factors, that is alleles, into gametes. The last observation of the theory states that different chromosomes are sought into gametes independent of each other during meiosis. This is what even Mendel had said in his law of independent assortment. The alleles of the different genes are sought independent of each other during gamete formation. This is how the chromosomal theory of inheritance helps us understand that the genes are present on chromosomes and also that they are the units of heredity. This is how the theory supported Mendel's work and was useful in proving the laws of genetics put forth by Mendel. However, now the question is, how was this theory accepted? What results were presented to prove this theory right and acceptable? A few years later, another legendary scientist named Thomas Hunt Morgan carried out a few experiments on the little fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster. His experiments confirmed Sutton and Boveri's theory further. With all this, Mendel's long-ignored work gained recognition and the remarkable laws of genetics were accepted. <laughs>